Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to be installing an SSH server on Windows 10. This will allow you to access your Windows 10 system remotely through a command line interface, such as command prompt or terminal. Let's first hit the start button and then search for features. In features, this is where we'll enable the open SSH server, but we want to select manage optional features instead of the ones suggested up above. Make sure you select this option and that will load in settings for optional features. And if we scroll down, we can see the various different features that we currently have installed. What we want is the add a feature button. Click on that and then scroll down until you find open SSH server. This is the option we want, so we'll just click on that. And if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more operating system and programming videos. All right, and at this point, you wanna make sure that you have an internet connection or else the feature will not install properly. It also says that it's around 1.23 megabytes here, but it's really around 10 megabytes instead when everything is installed. Just a little note. We can hit install if you're ready. And in order to check the progress, we can actually go up here to the top left and press the back button. It'll show that the feature is getting added and what the current progress is. It might take a few moments in order to finish up the install. And once it is installed, we'll be able to see it in the list. I see open SSH server now installed and you can hit the uninstall button if you don't want it anymore. All right, and we're not quite done yet. So open SSH server runs on your computer as a service and will allow for incoming SSH remote connections. This can be applied locally or even publicly if you wanna set up your firewall and router to allow incoming public connections. Although I do not recommend doing this and we'll be doing it locally here today, this is a great tool to be able to access your computer via a command line interface and make quick edits or even transfer files. Let's exit out of here and we'll want to restart the computer so that the computer registers OpenSSH as a service. So let's do that real quick. Start, power, and restart, and give it a few moments. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. And now that things are restarted, by default, the SSH service is not enabled as a running service, so we'll have to enable it in services. If we go to the search bar and just type in services, then we get this services app. Let's launch that. In this list of services, we'll search through until we find open SSH server. Here it is. And currently it says that it is of a startup type of manual. What we want is automatic. We can right click on this process, go to properties, and then we'll see this startup type. Under startup type, there's a drop down box, which allows you to set it to automatic if you'd like. You can also disable the service at any point but what I want is the automatic service type. That way it starts up automatically with the computer. And currently, since the service status is stopped, I want to start the service in order to be able to use it. After hitting start, we'll see that the service is now running and we can hit okay. We can also confirm it's running here in the background. Finally, there's one other thing we need to do before we test our connection and that's create a firewall rule. So if we go down to the search bar again and search for firewall, we'll see firewall and network protection. Click on that. And what we're looking for in here is the advanced settings option. This will ask you for administrative privileges. You can hit yes, and that will load the Windows Defender firewall. So since we want to enable an inbound connection, we can go to the inbound rules and create a new rule on the right hand side. Inside of here, we want to specify a specific port that we want to allow inbound to this computer. Now this is only locally right now. I'm not messing with the router. Then I'm gonna hit next and choose TCP and specify my port. So the default port for SSH is port 22 and that's what I'll use. And then hit next. Now I'm selecting the default option which is allow the connection and I'm hitting next again. On this screen, we have domain, private, and public. So these are the types of networks where this rule will apply for. I'm going to allow it to apply for any of the three types, and then I'm going to hit next. Finally, I'm asked for a name, so I'll just put SSH here. So that reminds me of what the rule is for, and I hit finish. 
After all that's done, we'll see SSH in the background and it says profile all and it's currently enabled because it says yes. All right, great. Now it's time to find the IP address of this computer. There's multiple ways of doing that. You can either run the command prompt and type in IP config, or if you want a graphical method, we'll search for view your network properties. And what we're looking for is the IPv4 address. And that's currently set to 192.168.1.116 for me at least. Yours of course might be different, but that's my current IPv4 address. And I'll have to remember this address in order to be able to connect to this computer via SSH. All right, now I'll go over to another computer on my network where I can try SSHing into this computer. And now I'm over on my Linux desktop computer where I'll try SSHing remotely into the computer where I just set up OpenSSH on. And in order to do that, I launched a terminal here, so my command line interface, and I'll type in SSH space, a username for the computer I'm connecting to. So a user on that is Savvy Nick. Yours, of course, will be different, followed by at the IP address that we just found out. So mine was 192.168.1.116. Now I'm being asked for my password in order to connect with my username. I'll type in my password. If nothing's being printed out, it still is typing it in. This is just a security mechanism. Press enter after you've typed in your password. And if you got this far, congratulations, you've successfully remoted into your Windows 10 computer using SSH and successfully set up open SSH on the Windows 10 computer. We can now navigate through the computer if we want with such things as change directory. So I might go to the desktop and list the contents here, which there's currently really nothing on the desktop. But if I wanted to make, let's say, a file, I could. Maybe I wanted to just echo Savvy Nick inside of a new file called test.txt. Now we'll go back to the Windows 10 computer and verify if the file is there on the desktop. All right, back on my Windows 10 desktop. Now I have this file called test and everything looks like it's working successfully. I'm connected to the right computer, and that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.